Now next, we'll cover this and then we'll take a little break. Leadership should understand the law of averages. One of the most important studies to study is the law of averages. And the reason is because everybody's affected by it. This side of the world, the other side of the world. Business is affected by it, social, personal, people, religious, doesn't matter what it is. We're all affected by the law of averages. The church is affected by it. The, the office is affected by it. The community is affected by it. The state's affected by it. The families, everybody's affected by the law of averages. So it's a good one to understand how it works, what's going on, so you're not disappointed and tipped over and upset. See, once you find out the truth, there's a Bible phrase that says, the truth sets you free. And it sets you free from animosity. It sets you free from being tipped over and bent out of shape. You just have to understand how it is. People used to cut me off on the freeway. I would go absolutely bonkers. I'm now chasing them down the freeway. <laughs> See, I learned not to do that, right? Because some things are just, uh, just frustration. They accomplish nothing. It's like saying, liar shouldn't lie. Now, see, that's called idle conversation. <laughs> right? There's no use even talking about that. Because, see, liars are going to lie. Now, you can say they shouldn't, but that won't help. Okay? Liars lie. Cheaters cheat. Thieves steal. And you can say they shouldn't. But that's called idle conversation. Understand how it is. Some things are, it's just, like, it's just like it is. Once you understand that that's how it is, see, now that takes you off the hook from being bent out of shape, disappointed, frustrated, angry, you don't understand, you're all confused. See, once you know, then it just takes away all the confusion and the misunderstanding and the misreading. Now when somebody cuts you off on the freeway, see, you just, you learn to handle that better. You tell them they shouldn't, see, that won't help, right? Because they're always going to do that. You know, if those people who cut you off on the freeway really tip you over, then you're going to be tipped over the rest of your life because those people are always going to do that. They're known as cutter offers on the freeway. I mean, that's what they are. <laughs> One of the best things is to take the simple approach. The guy says to me, well, this is happening to me, and this is happening to me, and this is happening to me. I do this, and then this happens, and then this goes wrong, and then this happens. How come all these things happen to me? I'm trying my best. I say, sir, I really don't know. The best experience I've got over the last 25 years especially is those kind of things always happen to people like you. <laughs> I don't know. That's the best I can figure out. What you've got to consider is if you wish for it to change, you must consider that perhaps you should change. See, if this is happening to me, maybe it's because it's the person I am. Now, some things are accidents, I understand that. But some things are attracted. You've just got to make sure that it wasn't just accident, that maybe you're becoming that kind of cynical person. Maybe unhappiness is attracting unhappiness. Maybe over, overdue sadness is, is attracting sadness, right? Maybe confusion attracts confusion. And it's true. Whatever we are attracts. So we must take a look and see where we are. But the law of averages is unique. And of course, the best place to study all the laws is in the Bible. Here's what the law of averages says. If you do something often enough, if you do something often enough, you will get a ratio of results. A ratio. And that's one of the key words in leadership to remember. Everything has ratios. Now, what do we mean by ratios? Well, it concerns anything. Let's say you just joined a new company and you're out selling some new product. And you talk to 10 people. You're just brand new. You talk to 10 people. Say, I got this neat product and you present it to 10 people. Nine say no, and one says yes. Now, already you've got your ratio going, and we call it one out of 10. 
That's fairly simple, right? No matter what you do, if you do it continuously for a while, you'll get a ratio, some kind of ratio. Okay. In baseball, what do we call it? Batting average. Batting average. See, if somebody's pitching, you're up there swinging, sure enough. Now, even if you're, you're an amateur, if you keep swinging, you'll, you'll get one, right? The ball will hit your bat, I mean, <laughs> right? You, you just get in the way, you know? You just do it often enough. But a ratio starts to develop, right? Now, here's an interesting question about the ratio. Who will this ratio work for? See, anybody can get a ratio started. That's a key word. Any one can work on this ratio. Now, you might say, well, if you're getting started and nine say no and one says yes, right, you're not doing that well. Well, let's see, at first you don't worry about doing well. At first you get a ratio going so that you can look at it and analyze it and see what's happening. That's why it's very important in sales we teach. Talk to lots of people every day, and at the end of the day, jot down your progress. This is why your journal is so important. At the end of the day, make a list of your progress. Here's what I did, and here's what happened. So that you can go back over it and start analyzing it. So you can see what to fix, and what to get on that's good, and what to get off that's bad. But anybody can get one of these ratios going. Now, even those that say no are valuable because at first they listen to you practice your presentation, right? And we teach in sales, you don't want to make a sale, you want to become a sales person. So these people who say no, they're listening to you practice. In fact, at first you might want to pay them. <laughs> say, here's five dollars, just listen to my presentation. I'm not that good at it yet, you know, whatever, right? To get this whole thing started. Now, this will work for anybody, one out of ten. Now, see, uh, you can start to compete. Here's the next rule for the law of averages, the ratios. Once a ratio starts, it tends to continue. Once a ratio starts, it tends to continue. If you're just getting started, you talk to 10, nine say no, one says yes. Here's what's exciting. Chances excellent if you talk to 10 more, you get another one. It's uncanny. I don't even know how it works. All I know is it works. Sure enough, another one will say yes. And see, now all you got to do is just do this two or three times. Talk to 10 more. Another one says yes. Now you know you're getting about one out of 10. And see, now you can start to compete. And that's one of the next best incentives is competition. So get your ratios going so you can compete. Now, see, if I joined your company and I just got started and you're so good, you can get nine out of 10. And I just started and I can only get one out of 10 because I just got there. If we have a contest for 30 days on sales, I will win. So he says, how would you do that? See, it's very simple. Since you're so good, you can get nine out of 10 and the contest goes 30 days, while you're talking to 10 and getting nine, I will talk to 100 and get 10. So that when the month is over, you've got nine, I've got 10. I win. <laughs> and that's one of my objectives, is to win. Now I have another objective, for you to lose. because you learn a great deal by losing. And I wish to be your teacher. <laughs> Competition, learning how to compete. What I do is make up for in numbers what I first lack in skill. Once you understand the law of averages, you can make up for in numbers what you first lack in skill. See, if I have to, I'll sleep three hours a day and work 21 or 20. I will to win. Now, I can't do that forever, but if we've got something going, see, I'll just make up for in numbers. If I don't have the skill, I will make it up in numbers. Okay, now you can start to compete, getting one out of 10. A ratio tends to continue. Now, who will it continue for? Anyone who tries, if you try. Okay, now here's the next key on the law of averages. The ratio can be increased. 
Isn't that unique? You talk to 10, get one. Talk to 10 more, get one. Talk to 10 more, you get another one. Talk to 10 more, you get two. Why is that? Why would about the fourth time you talk to 10, you get two instead of one? You're getting better. Key question. Who can get better? Anyone who tries. See, that's exciting. Now, could you stay and work hard enough to get this ratio up to three or four out of 10? Is that possible? For who? Anyone. Could you stay long enough to be a pro, get six, seven out of 10? Is that possible? For who? Anyone. What's exciting to know is that capacity meeting opportunity can yield the most incredible results. And you have all the capacity that's necessary and you're surrounded by opportunity. I mean, you lack nothing from where you sit to create enterprise and wealth and fortune, and lifestyle, all the uniqueness you want. Being surrounded by opportunity and having unlimited capacity. I mean, what else would you ask for? Some people say, well, could you just bring it to me? Well, no, no. <laughs> okay. Now, there's a Bible story that teaches the law of averages. It's an interesting story called the parable of the sower. The parable of the sower, the story of the sower. And if you haven't read it for a while, it's an interesting, very interesting uh, story to read. It's a great illustration of the law of averages, the parable of the sower. The sower in the ancient days was the guy that planted the crops. They called him the sower. Right? They got the ground ready. I don't know just how they all got it all ready, right? But they got the ground ready. And this guy called the sower was the planter of the crops. And he would take a bag of seed, walk across the field, and he would, right, sow the seed and plant the crops. They called him the sower. Now, the story of the sower is a typical story of life and people and results and what you can expect. Right? And then you let the obvious be your best teacher. Now, when you read the story of the sower, you'll come up with some interesting, uh, some interesting points. First, the sower was a wise man. And when you read the whole story, you'll come to the conclusion the sower was a wise man, which is a high advantage. Right? You don't want to send a dummy out to plant. Right? We will all starve come fall. Next point of the story was the sower had excellent seed. Excellent seed. Story says he had the best. He didn't settle for something cheap and second best. Third point of the story, he was highly ambitious. And when you read the whole story, you'll come to the conclusion this man was ambitious, which is an admirable quality. Ambition. And then he went to work. Guy says, oh, I knew there was a hitch in here somewhere. That's where it is probably, right? The guy goes to work. Now the story with the sower, with the excellent seed, highly ambitious, Opportunity all around him. He has the capacity. He's got the seed. Everything's ready. And he starts out to sow to get some results. Now, it's an interesting story about what happened to him. It's a typical story of life, but it's fascinating. Here's what it says. He starts out to sow the seed early in the morning, but the first part of the seed that he sows falls by the wayside and the birds get it. He's sowing this good seed, highly ambitious man, sowing this good seed and the birds are grabbing it. He sows some more and the birds grab that. He sows some more and the birds grab that. Now, remember, this is a typical story of life and people. Now, is that fairly typical? See, I got to tell you as a leader, the birds are going to get some of the seed. You get a hold of John. Let's say you're in real estate, right? Somebody here is in real estate. You get a hold of John. John says, hey, I'm looking for a change. I need a new uh, occupation change. And I've heard about real estate. You say, John, come on over Friday night. We're going to have this orientation class. And we'll show you how to do it. Might be the new life for you. Earn the money you want to earn. Get your life turned around. Who knows what'll happen? John says, sounds great to me. Uh, I'll be there on Friday night. Learn all about it. I'll probably be one of your best salesmen. Say, okay, see you Friday night. Now come Friday night, 7.30, supposed to start. John's not there. Hmm. 
say, well, maybe the traffic's a little heavy. So uh, we wait till quarter to eight. About eight o'clock, we come to the conclusion. What? He's not going to show. Question. What's happened since this unique conversation that you had with John, and you dropped on him this great idea, you've got the explanation, helped change his life, he said he would agree to be there, and he's not there. What's probably happened between then and Friday night? The bird's done got the boy. <laughs> got him. And who knows who the heck it might be, right? Maybe it's his brother-in-law, right? Says, real estate, you're not going to mix up in that, are you? Talked him out of it. Or his plumber. Says, let me tell you about real estate. His plumber. Now, if you get the message back as to what happened, see, here's where you might get off track. There's a couple of things you can do when the birds are grabbing the seed. One is you can chase birds. You say those dirty birds, and away you go after the birds. You say, wait till I get a hold of his brother-in-law. I'll straighten him out. Tear him a new page. What does he know about real estate? His plumber. Now, see, you're off trying to straighten things out rather than accepting it as it is. The best study of life is how it is, not how you wish it to be, not how you wish to rearrange it, how to take advantage of how it is. Some people would rather get even than to get ahead. They get off course. See, if you're off chasing birds, you have left the field. You're not sowing anymore. Now your chances go down instead of up. There's some things you don't try to cure. There's some things you ignore. Here's what it said this wise sower did. It said he ignored the birds and he kept on sowing. How clever. There's some things you just got to accept. That's the way it is. So he keeps on sowing. And here's the key. If you keep sowing, you can sow more than the birds can get. But the birds are part of life. And don't press me why. I didn't arrange all this. I don't know. It's just the way it is. So he keeps on sowing. Now the story says this sower keeps on sowing. Now the seed falls on shallow ground, rocky ground, where the soil is shallow. And it says the little plant starts to grow. This time, the birds didn't get it. But the first hot day, these little plants wither and die. Now, that's kind of disappointing, isn't it? But see, that's bound to happen. This time you recruit John. John says, I'll be one of your best. He doesn't show up at the third meeting. You say, where's John? I say, I don't know. Somebody said, boo. And he... <laughs> when I went to high school, there were uh, 400 and some in the... No. Yes, there were 400 and some in the freshman class and 150 in the graduating class. Is that unusual? See, there's always more freshmen than seniors. What's that called? The law of averages. Life takes its inevitable toll. Everybody should stay and finish, right? Maybe they should, but they don't. And you've got to learn to take that into stride. See, otherwise you'll be bent out of shape, you'll be tipped over, you'll be frustrated, you will misread life, and you won't know what's happening. You've just got to understand, sometimes the seed falls on shallow ground. And it didn't say what to do about the shallow ground. It just said that's the way it is. And we have a tendency to say, I thought sure John had last a month. But sure enough, it's happened. Now, you're going to be disappointed. Let me put this in here. When this doesn't work out, you know, just as you've planned, you're going to be disappointed. But here's what you must learn to do as a leader. Learn to discipline your disappointment. That's very important. Because sometimes it's easy to say, well, Pete, he's quit. John, he's quit. I guess I'll quit. And you just follow instead of lead. You're going to be disappointed. So be disappointed, but don't let it kill you. And don't let it stack up. Just understand, that's the way it is. I wish you would have stayed. 
but I wish him the best wherever he's gone. He didn't last, but so what? That's life. Now then, here's what it said the wise sower did. He kept on sowing. How clever. Now it says the seed falls on thorny ground. Then the little plant starts to grow, but then the thorns choke it to death. Now, is that fairly typical? See, the thorns are going to get some. The little Bible story called the thorns the cares of life. Little cares, little duties that cheat people out of big opportunities. And it happens every day. And I don't know what to do about it. I call John up and I say, John, where were you last night? We had a meeting. John says, well, I can't make every meeting. I say, why not? John says, well, I got a lot of other things I got to do. I say, what are they? You won't believe the list John gave me for last night. The backyard fence was sagging and the dogs are about to get out. You just can't let your dogs run loose. The screen door had come off the hinges. You, you just can't let things fall apart. You got to take time and keep things fixed up. Some extra trash had piled up in the garage. You just can't let mountains of trash take over. You got to take time and haul out this stuff. On the phone, I can hear the thorns getting him. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> people letting little things cheat them out of big opportunities. Some people have the incredible ability to major in minor things. I drive through this little community. John's out there mowing his lawn, cussing the weeds, his face is red, and he's about to explode. I stop and I get out of the car. I say, John, what are you doing? He says, what does it look like? I'm doing a mowing this lousy lawn. I say, John, there's all kinds of little neighborhood boys around here. Mow your lawn. He says, well, they want $5. I'll mow it myself. I'll mow it myself. <laughs> Number one, there should be a law against cheating some little neighborhood boy out of five dollars. <laughs> that should be a law. But see, the biggest cheat is letting little things cheat you out of major opportunities called the thorns, the cares. But now what do you do about that? Well, see, I used to give classes on how not to let the thorns see, but that won't work. I mean, those classes won't help. Here's what it said this wise man did. He kept on sowing. How clever. He understood the law of averages. Keep sowing. Good people are not trained, they're found. You don't need much training, right, with good people. Find good people. Now, it says, finally, the seed falls on good ground. That's what it says, good. Somebody says, how do you find the good ground? Answer, keep looking. You'll recognize it when it comes by. You won't have to make something bad into something good. You'll recognize good when it comes by. Now, even the good ground, the story says, part of the good ground produced 30%, part of it produced 60%, and part of it produced 100%. Even the good ground. What's that called? The law of averages. The ratios. Where do they work? Everywhere. Who for? Everybody. Now, what you must do is understand the ratios as a leader so that you learn how to work with them and not against them. Now, see, I used to give classes here on how to do 100%, but see, that won't help. It's called frustration for the leader. Right? In the evening seminar, I say, right? The key to management is don't send your ducks to Eagle School, right? <laughs> and this is part of it here, right? It's learning where, what to do, and how to find the right people. What to do and how to find the right people. See, that's major. So you let people who want to produce 30. They make a contribution to the whole and the 60 and the 100. Now, here's the key question. How do you find the 100 percenters? Answer, you got to go through the birds. You got to go through the hot weather getting some. You got to go through the shallow, rocky soil. 
you got to talk to the 30 people, the 60 people, to find you the hundreds. Here's what we say. If you want a lot of seniors, you must load the freshman class. Okay, that's how you find seniors. You just load the freshman class. And there's a lot of things, you just watch the process. You don't try to change the process. You just share the story and watch what happens. Share the opportunity and watch. And you pick by watching what happens. You don't force, you don't make, and you don't change, you watch. So it's called act and share and watch and pick. Okay, act and share and watch and pick. And what's smart is to pick 100 percenters that become 100 percenters, right? You look like a hero. And you don't try to make 100 percenters out of people who are not going to do very much. And see, that's not on them. Now, some people in one enterprise are going to do much better, you know, in one enterprise than they are in another. But whatever enterprise you've got going or whatever you're working with in the way of people, just understand the law of averages. And here's the key. Don't try to change it. Learn to work with it. Okay, is that helpful? Yeah. The law of averages. I'm telling you, it'll save you a lot of heartache. It'll save you a lot of mistakes and a lot of errors and a lot of wondering and a lot of pondering, sleepless nights, agony. I mean, it just cures a whole lot of things once you understand the law of averages.